Hi there. Well, I was thinking about uh, a prayer that would be good for any situation or every situation. You know, during this pandemic, during times of stress, or even times of good. Is there a prayer that kind of encompasses all of them? And of course, we have the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It is a fantastic prayer. But it's a little bit wordy. And sometimes we want a prayer that's a a little bit more uh, succinct. Especially when we're going through something, you know, maybe we're not thinking... We're not at peace or we're not calm. So I was thinking, what, what kind of prayer would kind of encompass every situation? And, and I thought of this prayer. I thought, okay, what if we prayed something like this? God, in this circumstance, and then we're thinking of whatever the circumstance we're thinking of. God, in this circumstance, would you change it to whatever is most glorifying to you and most good? To me. God, change the situation to whatever is most glorifying to you and most good to me. Or in a way that's most glorifying to him. And I think that's a, a good prayer. You know, we're we're doing a couple things by it. We're confessing that God uh, can do what he wants to do. We're confessing that what he wants to do is actually what's most good for us. Uh, We're in that prayer, we're saying we want to glorify God. And and in my next video, I'll talk about what it means to glorify God or bring glory to him. But we're also inviting God to come into our situation or into our lives and to change it. We're saying, God, uh, I'm giving you control. I'm surrendering to you. And so, uh, God, change the situation to whatever will bring you most glory and me most good. I thought, okay, that's a pretty good prayer. But it's kind of lacking something still. Maybe it's a little bit too wordy still. You know, and, and maybe maybe things are great. And, and there's no real situation I need to pray about right now. Like things at work are fine. Things at home are fine. Things at school, wherever, are fine. Okay, well, what if we were to change it then and actually shorten it a little bit more even to just, God, do what will bring you most glory and me most good. Do what will bring you most glory and me most good. And we're still confessing who he is and what he can do and what he wants to do. We're still uh, showing our desire to bring him glory. And behind it, Implicit in that prayer is whatever situation we might be going through, or even if things are great, God, do whatever will bring you most glory and me most good. And then I realized, actually, somebody's already prayed a version of that prayer, but even shorter and more succinct. And that prayer was, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. It was the prayer of Jesus the night he before he was betrayed, or the night he was betrayed, the night before he was crucified. And he knew what was coming up. He knew his crucifixion was coming up. He knew his betrayal was about to happen, and both of those were painful experiences that he went through. He knew that dying on the cross, taking our sins onto him on the cross, would separate him from the Father, and that was incomprehensible for us and and the the pain and the anguish he must have felt he even cries out my god my god why have you forsaken me like we don't we we can't get that he's not looking forward to that he's doing it out of love for us that we might find freedom from our sins cleansing from our sins and right relationship with the father He prays the night before his crucifixion. He says, God, if there's any other way, 
but he knows there's not. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And that is a fantastic prayer. That implicit in that prayer is all these other ideas. Whatever situation you're going through, whatever you're kind of you're aiming the prayer at, if you will. The confession that God wants what's good for us, what's best for us, and will do what's best for us. And the confession of uh, uh, wanting his glory and inviting him to work in our lives and in our, our situations. Now, when we pray these prayers, uh, God, your will be done, not mine. God, do whatever is most glorifying to you and best for me, and most good to me. God, in this situation, change this situation to whatever will bring you the most glory and me the most good. There's no guarantee in these prayers that he will change the situation. Sometimes he will. But what he will do is he will change us. He will bring us through it. And when we come through it, we will be more mature in our faith, more in love with him, more truly human as God created us to be, not marred by sin and death. You know, elsewhere in the scriptures, it says God disciplines those he loves. It's not punishment, but it's disciplining so that we'll learn from it and mature from it. And sometimes he lets us go through the situations so that we'll come out better in the end. Sometimes he'll change the situations. But when we pray, God, not my will, your will be done. God, do whatever brings you most glory and me most good. God, change the situation in any way that will bring you most glory and me most good. He will answer that prayer. Because that's a prayer of humility. It's a prayer of surrender. It's the prayer that Jesus himself prayed to the Father. And through Jesus' submission to the Father... And willingness to say, God's will, not my will. Really, really great came out of it, not just for Jesus, who Paul tells us because of that, God exalted him to the to the highest place in heaven and gave him the name that is above every name. But through Jesus' surrender and willingness to do the Father's will and not his own will, you and I can find freedom through Christ, and find that new life in God. So I want to invite you, tomorrow morning when you wake up, the next day when you wake up, and the day after that, and the day after that, even after you're done watching this video, just pray that prayer. God, not my will, but your will be done. God, in this situation, not my will, but your will be done. God, whatever brings you most glory, and me most good. And he will answer it. Well, that's it for me for today. God bless, and I'll see you soon.